fine and I want to finish with that where they live. I'm with you. And the remains are still there. But let me tell you about this place. It is the worst archaeological place I've been to in my life. I would, I'm very hesitant to go back. Of our group, the two ended up in hospital within a week. Another one had pleurisy and one was coughing their heart out of our place, coughing up blood. Um, most of our group got incredibly sick. Some went to hospital, didn't you? Um, Lisa, who's done, Lisa Harrison, who was also with us, she was actually had blood in her tissue. She was coughing up at the same time. Another guy got sick. The whole time I was there, I didn't see an insect or a bird or an animal. It's a death site. It's an incredible death site. What we found, and then we'll take around a couple of the time if you carry two of those things. They probably um, start with the path and the go. Take those two around through. Evan's going to take around, he'll keep coming around with different ones, two or two at a time, just keep going back. He'll take you around with a place, I'm not going to tell you where it is because I'm not at liberty to do so. And there you're going to find um, the remains of this explosion that took place. There was an explosion that took place here. I don't know if this was a wall. I don't know what took place, whether they had a machine that did something that blew it up. You're going to see gutters there that a lady's lays inside. These gutters are massive. They're about this big. The two lips are identical to each other, and they are both 68 millimetres across. Don't tell me that's natural, because it isn't. I've got a geologist that was a senior lecturer at uh, Sydney Uni who gave up on the go. He didn't want to say it's what it is because that he'd lose all his reputation, but he said it wasn't natural. Those gutters, and have a look at the path. I've been to the path. That is not a natural rock formation. I've got underneath it. It sits on top of dirt. These were all part of what took place when this explosion took place. There's another one at the path there. There's another one. We're going to hold up over here. We'll just do all this together. Down here. Here's um, what we think they were smelting it in. We think they were melting metal there. made from this place here. We think the metal's been made there. We think there are paths there. We sell. We've got chairs there. You've got on the back. What's on the back of that one? Have you got those round thing? There's this lady laying inside it to give you an idea when I said these gutters are big. And by the way, this is on the very top of a plateau. It's near the highest part of the whole Blue Mountains. I can tell you now, it's not running off the water because there's no water up there. It's on the very peak. This stuff here, it's all the same thing. That, we found this everywhere. We found about 20 of these all spread and they were laying on top of vegetation sometimes. They weren't, weren't connected to the ground at all. There's been an explosion here. We found a temple, a sort of a, a long column. We didn't photograph this. It went for about 20 metres. You can see that's a bit that's broken, another bit, another bit. It was about this wide. It obviously was standing right up in the ground. This area is death country. I'm not going back. Another group are talking about it. I just felt so bad there. I saw so many people get sick. I still think... I don't know if there's radiation in there. I think there's something still in there that's not right about the place. And I've asked the original people about that place. Don't want to know about it. Don't go there. Don't sing there. No, nothing about it. You don't want to go near it. and won't even walk there. Is it, um, yeah, in proximity, Everything I've told you about, look, I'll be a little bit more specific, no more than I want to be. I'm looking at the catchment area that runs to Gosford. You go from the back of the Blue Mountains and you run through the rivers there and it takes you to Gosford. It's in that region. It's all along there. Everything I've shown you by that one damp thing to show you the Duramong and the Thos uh, thing were everywhere is all in that region. So it's all part of that region. You see, as Arnie Mini told us, when the Egyptians sailed here, they didn't come from the top. Their boats. And we have a picture of their boats. We've got one we found there, which is 10,000 years old. And we'll find that and I'll show that to you next. Their boats, what they did is they came down the coast of Africa, then caught the roaring 40s and just aimed their boat and went across them. Kangaroo Island, which is actually called Carter, not Kangaroo Island. The proper name is Carter, which is Island of the Dead, blessed those of you. It's the most sacred place in Australia. <coughs> And I'm just over here in case you're wondering where I've gone. And what, what we found is 
Kangaroo was the first place they went to. Now I can even tell you about the brothers. I know the story about the brothers. They actually landed in Wollongong before they came to Gosford. They landed in Wollongong, they tried Wollongong, and what happened there was the Wollongong mob beat the crap out of them. And when they came to Gosford, they were nursed nurse back to health. They were looked after because they didn't know. That's why the line starts with we are stranded in this wretched land. They had a horrible experience. They thought they were going to heaven on earth, the Garden of Eden, which is what this place is and was. And that they got beaten up because they landed in the wrong place. They were never supposed to go to Wollongong. There are only three places the Egyptians were allowed to land. Kangaroo Island, Gosford and Sydney. Nowhere else. All allegiances take through that and then they're taken out. I know from Sydney, they're taken out to the middle. They're escorted out to the middle and brought back in. They went to the whole of Australia for those 4,000 years. So this was part of what they did. And then what they did is they would surf the boring 40s going back. And that was the way they did that, from back up the coast. So basically, it's not a great feat of seamanship because all they're doing is hugging the coast of Africa, picking up the winds, bringing them across to Australia. They come along the bottom and make their way up to it and they're not allowed to go past Gosford. But they did come up here. We are going back. Lion Island's part, there's a, a perfect triangle between the Gosford Cliffs, Lion Island, and another place. So I won't mention because I'm not allowed to. And actually, if you look at it, I've seen the map of it. It is 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees. It's a perfect triangle. And the two lines are almost equal distance to each other. It's like someone's gone up in space somewhere and said, OK, we'll put one there, one there, one there. It makes a perfect triangle. There's also Yes, like, yeah, it is exactly right. Right off Palm Beach. Right Beach. It's the first month. So basically, ladies and gentlemen, what we have there is a place that is an integral part of Egyptian history, an integral part of their heritage. It's a vital part of the original history, and it is our heritage too, which has been denied. And if I explain to you how bad this denial is, we actually took an ABC archaeologist, we took an ABC journalist on site to see the new stuff I've shown some of you. Not all, but I've shown you some. They, they, she then compiled the report. It turned up on Jan, uh, December the 10th on National News. It was the third, second item up. They went for one hour, one minute, 40 seconds. Um, it was on Triple J. It was being highlighted all over Australia. And within one hour of being put up, it was taken off. There was an accompanying article which this person, Mary Louise Mins, wrote. And I swear to you, I couldn't have written a better one for myself. I sat down for days. It was so pro us, I was embarrassed by it. But don't worry, I didn't need to be because the half an hour after all our articles were taken off, that was taken off too. About a week later, they put on a new article. They took off all articles about carrier. Everything from before has been taken off. Then about a week later, they put back an, art, a, an article by two people, two other people who said the glyphs were a fake. And bear in mind, I did this talk and never mentioned the glyphs. I talked about all the other stuff and deliberately didn't talk about it. And the ABC had told academics that they have the right to take off whatever they want and don't have to answer for anyone. And that's the official response. That are, and by the way, we've spoken to other people in the ABC and they've never heard of this happening before. So there is a cover-up that goes all the way up. When this got out, it was spreading all over the place. People were hearing about it because it was such a pro article about what we're talking about. They were basically saying it's done and dusted the Egyptians were here. It was taken off because of that same reason. They do not want this to go out. We do know that when this was covered up, it didn't stop at National Parks and Wildlife. We know it went into state government. I know the names of the ministers. I can't mention them because I'd be done to slander. We know they were involved in covering this up too. We also know they know of other stuff. We also know the original people tried to give up all this stuff in 1996 and they were smashed then, but they didn't have internet like they've got now. And that's why we're putting all that stuff up on YouTube. We cannot get this published. I mean, we've been published 10 times, uh, 15 times in the National Indigenous Times. We can't get any major press. They will not touch the people at the poll. We have a big embargo at the places. Because we have the truth. We have 90 the or something, when that happens, don't you? Well, when the ABC. 
Since then, we've had contact from elders everywhere. Saying, Mistakes made. They tried to bring the story of the elders. 
the PA is down the ground, it's not the summer half light, if I say it certainly is now. But we did that. So they found that difficult and they needed to find something to really hide out in for. And that's why they created Homo sapiens created. It's our belief that the gospel, plus two places up here, are worthy of world as the genesis of Egyptian civilization, original civilization, and American status. And ladies and gentlemen, even something like mummification, it's that original. There's they found a mummy, they found a mummy up at um, Darnley Island, which stated that 2,900 years since Ralph Sorrento said that the embalming practice of Egyptian people used are exactly the same as the concept of the things. Nothing that happened. It's the same talk on this. This guy's mummified everything. Their religious practices are Osiris and Isis. In fact, in this book here, we claim Isis is Aboriginal. He was cheap, long, and very much like a tribe in cold paint, but he said it was a start to work for a while. But it didn't work. We found this in the garden of Eden. You know about the Eden, yes? It's the Eden in the Bible, it's just the Eden in the Bible. But it was one hundred percent as every every person was left. No, no, really. And then the scientists, but we didn't put more we can here. The people are the last, the Grecian last come. No, the Phoenicians, the Egyptians, the Pleiadians, the Spanish, the Portuguese, they all went. And they all left when they were told. Unfortunately, the last mob didn't live when they were told. And ladies and gentlemen, just to finish, this is the original is designed. Well, one word of it is come to me. Everything we've got comes to the elders. We know it was right because we have not got one order. And every chance that we've made a mistake, we don't feel like it's a bit of a lot of power. And I even make a mistake with one bird. And I get told. And we just told straight away. I get to settle every time. We just want to tell you what. And we got that fixed up. We just got all that one. And I don't use that anymore. We listen to what we're told. And what's happening now is, over the next couple of months, all is going on. What I'll show you today, what we're going to see next week, then when we come back up here, I'm very fond of the handicaps here, which are more amazing than anything that I can see that I show you today. So don't worry, I'll see you. I've got a few things to talk about this. I feel like I was doing all this bastard stuff, and I'm really not here, but nothing for us. I now know what it's up for us. Oh, you can't be envious that much. Oh, yeah, okay. So we've just got to say, you've got that from them. <laughs> so I know, we can't say what it is because we're still a lot more smart. Left. I'm sure this Uncle Jerry mentioned what it was to me and told me. I asked him to bring it. He said, of course, I'm going to bring it. We've got something up here. This is what came to this place. We've got something more special. We've got an appendix to store with very nice things. I think you're proud that we're in this country. Is it New York Falls? Uh, you've got as much as you're getting out of me. You're not getting any more than that. That's all you're getting. I was talking today by Kookaburra. Okay. No, no, I'm just saying we've got somewhere coming soon. Very soon. We're about 90% sure we're there. We've just got quite a few percent. We could have done it as soon as we got back to it before we went down before it was too rushed. But it's coming. But for now, gospel for me, I've got to tell you, as somebody said this, we haven't read all the wars yet. Somebody said this, and I think they were right, it was David Fitzgerald. And by the way, David Fitzgerald would love to send it to me. You don't dismiss people like that. He said, it's a story of the past, a story of us. And he finished with this, he said, it's a prophecy book. We can't read it, can we share it? We're waiting. And it's quite funny. I, I was really chuffed when I read that door in Compton. When I rang up Uncle David, he said, oh, Uncle David. I've done so really good. He said, I've got, got this. He said, I didn't laugh. He said, oh, we're wondering where you find that. <laughs> I said, what do you mean to sell with you? That was it. We're just waiting for you to find it first. Because you don't get the next one until you found that. And, like, right. and then I realised, I'm discovering nothing. I'm just finding what they know about. And they're just pushing me along, pulling the strings, and piece by piece, they push us a bit further. So, believe me, the people of this country, 
they were the first people, they were the first astronomers, the first sailors, the first mariners, the first philosophers, the first religion, the first time they say the bar where we come from. And remember that saying that we started here, we began here, we'll finish here, and they made that clear, we're finishing up now, and then we'll be here again. The oldest say, ever since that red dust storm came out of the middle, he lost the downs, and then BHP straight there, that's not mine there. I was told that was coming out before it came out. We were told that, weren't we? And we'll leave you with one other prophecy we'll give you that this is very important. That mass we will get information in a month before that there'll be an earthquake. An earthquake in the centre, here we were And we were told a month before, we had it on email. On February the 23rd, we were told it was going to be on March the 23rd. On March the 23rd. But it wasn't an earthquake. Four women
Yeah, yeah, I did something. Look, I know there are a, there's a lot of stuff around there hiding. I know that I've been told that the 13 tribes of the bunker on Confederation, the Confederation of tribes, that's the middle of that, are all marked up by pyramids. I went to one of the pyramids. I've seen one of the pyramids up here, but luckily we've got bulldozers. I didn't know that, <laughs> but I did know what you told me. No, I didn't. And you also said another one, too, apparently you said that. Yeah. yeah, Adam Pippen's taken us up to that and we're going to film that. We've been working with Adam and some other stuff. In fact, we have pictures of some of the Adam stuff that's found around there because there's a bit of a worry out there. We didn't know about that. It was our intention. Yeah, Adam found this um, in the Byron by Sand Dunes, 10 feet under. Um, and I've taken that to every museum and um, uh, every museum and started the site in New Zealand and said, hey, this is probably too good for us to that. Um, I do know about the Thoth one, and we were going to make that YouTube number six, and then this stuff turned up. We are going to film that soon. Yeah. I did know about that one, and it's taken stuff that I don't know about. Stuff. Your apparently it's only just coming out now. It's not no one's ever spoken about it. No, this is not No, no, this is up in Cairns. Up in Cairns. No, no, the other one we have. That one there. The one I thought is. No, no, this is our. Um, No, I've seen pictures of it because uh, Adam's got them loaded up. But I've been with Adam a couple of times. The last time I went with it was the scariest. Yeah. Oh man, I saw my life pass through my eyes. The first time I was coming up, we were climbing up wet waterfalls of four meters, and there was no footholds. And when um, Jim Nutter came, hurt him down, and smashed himself against the side of the pit, of blood went everywhere. I'm not going any further, but that's why I'm a bit sus about going there because I've been with Adam before and it hasn't been an ex a pleasant experience. Great archaeology, but shit scare stuff. But we are going to do that one. I know about that, but I don't know about that one at all. And I'm going to have to talk to you. I'd like to know. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't know about that one. That is interesting. Look, they found three coins. I've seen pictures of three coins. Mark, Palm, and 227. This stuff, the Egyptian stuff has been found all over the country. It's not in actually one place. That's why they were taken everywhere. There's not one part of this country that didn't walk on. There's not one part of this country that didn't leave stuff behind. It's been found everywhere. The problem is, some people find one bit and they don't know what to do with it. What we're trying to do is we're acting as a repository for all the stuff and putting it in one spot together so we can dig up the big picture. But there's no denying. The Phoenicians 
We think the Egyptians were the most respected and revered of all of them. Then the Phoenicians, I think, come next. The Chinese had a checkered history, and the Spanish had not such a good history there. Portuguese had a former history there. So it varies from group to group, and then we have the British and the rest of the world put together. But all the way through there, they know about this stuff. They've hidden this stuff for quite some time. And I can tell you one thing, if you ever find the archaeology, and you want it so that no one will ever find it again, give it to the Smithsonian. They'll destroy it for you, no so problem. So who do you give it to? Uh, you don't give it to anyone. You can't give it to anyone, honestly. You cannot give it to any authority in Australia. I don't trust. No, there's one academic we're working with now, and we've now got an Aboriginal archaeologist, the only one in Australia, who's coming to the next site. He's been really brought on because he won't trust it. no one else. I wouldn't trust anyone else. I would make sure that you found out. Basically, I contact us and the people we're working with. We've got most of the people now that are working as a group. We might have about... Twenty in our smaller group and eight in our bigger group are all working with us to bring information in. As I said to someone before, I don't have to be an Egyptologist. I've got some of the best in the world working with us and giving us information. We just check with them and they tell us what we make a mistake. I won't go to Australia and ask. They don't know anything about this sort of stuff. You can't give it to people around here. They will destroy it. When I told you they tried to destroy it, they put aside a slush fund, an illegal slush fund. This woman was actually looking after would keep making up reasons why she couldn't destroy it. If she was being pressured to destroy it, they will destroy anything. Quite funny you said West Australia, my son, other, other, our uh, other son, uh, not uh, this uh, one, uh, works in the museums and runs all the computers in the West Australian Museum. I do agree with his resume. He won't listen to anything. He won't even subscribe to our website. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what? When he believes this, we know we've cracked it big time. <laughs> 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 That's the benchmark. Once he believes it's where they're man. He's starting actually at the moment. He's heard about what's going on. He's starting to think there could be something there, but it's a tough ask, I can tell you. So what you're saying, mate, I think we're getting this nearly on a daily basis. We've been told of a lot of stuff. In fact, there's supposed to be an airport. They just, there's an airport somewhere they used to a guy found a whole set of glyphs there, hundreds of them. There are hundreds of glyphs up in another place I can't talk about because we've been invited there, so I'm not going to say where. That's a cave of about 600 groups, untouched, never been there before, no person's ever lived there. No deranged check, no seven years. <laughs> In fact, the only time, 15 years ago, the elders there decided they were going to take some archaeologists there. They shouldn't have. And when they got there, they had two boats to, to, to take them to this place. Mm -hmm. Both the boats wouldn't go. And the archaeologists were trying everything to get the things going, and they looked around to find where the elders were. Oh, well, they knew the boats weren't going because they weren't ready to go. There is stuff everywhere in this country. The Egyptians were so much a part of this. The issue you've got to watch here, ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you why they don't want to do this. The Spanish signed a treaty with the Egyptians. We know that for a fact. We do, don't we, Benham? We can't prove it yet. We know it as a fact. The Egyptians signed a treaty with the original people. The British have there are legal issues there that they don't want to take. Why do you think they're trying to ram the original people into the constitution right now? They're not in there at the moment. And they don't have to be. They are sovereign people. They have nothing to do with the British. They never signed a treaty with the British. And because of the treaty signed before, and I've got to tell you, the British and the Spanish were both liable to international law. And they both were supposed to carry international law, which means the Spanish treaty is still legally binding which means the gift will have no relationship with it. And the legal people know this. They know this is the case. But legally, the original people have no obligation with the British because they have treaties with others that are done in compacts and agreement. And I think that if I showed you down the bottom, that was another mark of the treaty. It's everywhere. It's on the wall. Why do you think the original people lived in carbon on those walls? They had permission, for God's sake. They couldn't have done it any other way. These guys didn't have guns with six shooters. The original people could have wiped them out any time they wanted. They let them stay because they were allowed to stay. We weren't allowed to stay. What we have to do is to get that same treaty that the original people have with the others. And until this country has that treaty, nothing will get that. So it's still part of that story. Is there um, another idea which people have been talking about? I don't understand why governments want to shoot them. Why, why would they want to shoot them? Oh, because it's making them liars. 
that is. Well, so, making their uh, lives, our history books and everything. Yeah. You know, just to be more. Well, what it is, look, I'm a teacher. I come from a, yeah, look, I come from a teaching point of view. At the moment, you can look what they teach in the history. It's a, lot, it's a story of war and conflict. What they don't want our kids to do is to say, well, we shouldn't have any wars. We shouldn't, I mean, 50% of our money is spent on that alone. They have to inculcate us and indoctrinate us to make us think this is the way we are. And if we actually thought that there were UFOs out there who could come and help us and show us all this new technology, I mean, the government would be in big trouble. I mean, because they've been hiding have... this from us. They've hit this from us and then we'll realise we've been lied to. All the way through they've lied to us and they've continually lied to us and they've lied to us to this day and the same reason we're taking off the Avery suit because that's part of the same lie. <laughs> If they find out that the people have lied to us about the most basic things, like who we are, where we came from, how can I trust these people anymore? I can't trust them if they tell me lies about that. Where does the lie stop? If they're prepared to lie about our heritage and where we come from and lie basically bold-faced about everything the original people have done, then we start to question them and say, how can I trust you, the people are supposed to say, well, I can't tell you that because you don't understand. We now say, no, you can't tell us that because you don't want us to understand. It's to do with the mindset. It brings down what they've been doing to us. Uh, it got worse. It's getting worse every day. Yeah. Well, we're in constant. And do you know what my daughter has actually found out? Do you know that Queensland is actually privately owned by Elizabeth Windsor? Yeah, that we're not part of the Constitution. Yeah. Look, I'll tell you how far this... I'll tell you how far this lie goes, ladies and gentlemen. Did you know in the first journal, the day that Captain Cook raised the flag, do you know he spoke about the fact, and it's in his journal, he can read and stay, and God, I got in trouble at Mullen High School when I said this. You know the book saw an Aboriginal person walking down the close of our... Why is that the book? That's written in his diary. And when I told the kids at Mullen High School, the kids went off to the teachers, and the teachers called me a liar. They called me a liar until I actually showed them the quote. They said, oh, yes, I didn't know that. That's how much they've been lied to. If we don't even know the original people that bow and arrow, what do we know about? And the answer is nothing. nothing. Absolutely nothing. Everything's been lied about. Everything's been kept as a lie. It's been kept a secret. They know. They know these things are here. They found these things and they deliberately keep it. And that's why they don't want this truth to get out because it's a tip of the iceberg. We've been lied with everything. And here we can catch them. We can bail them up with their lie. We can say, this is not true. You told us all this stuff. And I see that, ah, you, the Minister of Environment, were involved in this. I won't say which one it was. You actually signed the thing to get this slush fund. Where did you get that money from? Where's all that coming from? All that sort of going on is endemic of what they do all the time. But what's worse here, it's a different form of genocide. It's, not a, it's a cultural genocide. Where if you read what kids have been taught about Aboriginal people, and when I was taught, and some of you guys were taught as kids, they were the worst and worst. They were the most bad. Well, I've got books in the 1960s that say they lingered in the Stone Age when the rest of us progressed. We have got the worst, worst. We people. haven't. We've devolved, haven't we? Yes, we've we have. devolved we've like backwards. hundreds of thousands of years. We can't walk through trees. We can't walk on top of the air like the original. We can't. We, we can't. can't we can't like translocate just by thinking no. on it. They used to be able. <laughs> Now we have to buy tel we have to buy Telstra to yeah. telecommunicate. They used to do it for this, for nothing. They used yeah. to send a message and someone would come energy, along. You know? Now we've got to pay for it. They want us to pay for everything. The original way was a different way. It's a different way of living and it's the way we should be living. They don't want us to live that way. And they don't want us to start admiring their culture. Because once we start to admire their culture and we respect their culture, and I can tell you there are people around to this day who don't think this stuff is gone. It ain't gone. There are people that still have this skill. They still know this stuff. They know these stories. They want to give it up. And they're desperate to give it up. And now they do want to give it up. Look what's happening. We're still fighting. They will fight us down to the very last step, all the way through. They'll try and stop this stuff coming out. But we don't before, they'll do it again. But eventually, they won't win. Because their days are numbered. Because the people swell. People like you are getting work well, out there, and it's a swell. And the original and people are coming like... out of the box now. They're coming out and yeah. sharing stuff like Benner doesn't even know that Wallen Gary is going to give up everything and he's brought in this archaeologist and this archaeologist works at BHP and Ponce of Rio Tinto. He's their head archaeologist he's now working with us on site. He's from And he's working with BHP? No, no, he, they would hire him 
And because he's an Aboriginal and archaeologist, oh. well, that's going to get two ticks for them, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But no, it works for them, but he works for us for nothing. He's going to cut the beer back. Yeah. So we can't do that. So, just throw a, a small span here. Oh, right. um, there's, there's another story that uh, an interesting Egyptologist, Shlomo Benidus, is talking about a lot of what we call in Egyptian in terms of pyramids and hieroglyphs. It's actually not Egyptian per se, but Atlantean. And he, he cites that the, the flower of Atlantis was a blue water lily. Yes. And you see it all through Egypt, uh, in, in carvings and paintings, I mean in hieroglyphs and paintings. But uh, you see, when, when they um, presenting these Atlanteans, the, the flowers are always, the blue water lilies are always cut and on the altar. He's saying that that's showing that these people are not in their original land. Mm -hmm. They're being honoured, but they actually come from a different place. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting that all along the eastern seaboard here, we have the blue water lilies like so the mm -hmm. My, From my understanding, is these people that we're calling the Egyptians may actually be Atlanteans, mm -hmm. but that they came here and, and to Egypt and brought with them a particular type of, of, of culture. But when I came to your talk some time ago and you started to share that the people, the lineage of the original scale was saying they came from the Pleiades um, a million years ago, mm. you'd imagine that coming, yeah, they may have had uh, a very advanced technology that didn't necessarily apply ships, but they could just fold their, you know, get a fourth or buy locate them. Yeah. And so then it makes sense that there would have been this connection between. Um, the Egyptian Atlanteans and the people of, of this land, because the people of this land, according to this book here, which I think is incredible, is that um, they chose specifically to remain in um, a state with the environment, kind of together a type of state, to remain in that original mm -hmm. innocence, to, to have that voice of the first day of the dreaming, was to stay in that state continually. And so they, all their, their technology is in play, right? In other words, you didn't need a telephone no, to communicate with the public. You didn't need yeah. to build the ship if you could buy an okay, right? Yeah. And so I think um, what they were teaching was a very, a very high form of, you know, existence. Well, anything that technology can do is supposed to be able to do without That's right. So the we body have, has... We, have, we are a powerhouse of unknown... What, I suppose a few um, elders might know, but we are, a, we are a powerhouse of unknown energy and um, beats. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if I can so, answer that, and I will because you know what they're yeah, 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 go. So all of these people, mm -hmm. be they um, the Atlanteans or yep. other cultures, had externalized technology, whereas the people, the originals of this land, were probably the most advanced because they had the least external technology and yeah, managed yeah, to keep that going longer. So, yeah. so the, the story is then, so what, what if they were the original people, mm -hmm. and I, I believe they are, then what is it that, well, that they have at this time, you know, with all this information coming up, to teach us how to tap into the original technology of the body? And there's some more things that um, I think Paul may be interested to share with you about, about what these, uh, some of the original dream holders were, were doing up to quite recently yeah. in terms of their uh, technology that looks like this. Well, there's an easy way to answer that. Well, it is actually easy because a lot of elders don't call this Australia, Australia, they call it Mu. Mm -hmm. I've been with elders who refer to this as Mu, Lemeric, Mu, M-U. In fact, one of the glyphs on there is actually new. One of the glyphs on the wall is actually the sign for new. This is new. They look upon, there was a choice. And I think we've got the same choice again. Atlantis chose technology, and they chose the introspective way. And when Atlantis was submerged, most of you were submerged, but Australia wasn't. Australia wasn't. And Australia became the, basically the Garden of Eden, the place where new, the tradition of new continued. The Egyptians, they kept a lot of the traditions of players for the technology, they kept that. But notice this, ladies and gentlemen, they came back here. Because they realised here yeah, the technology gives something, but it doesn't give us a final clue. 
So they came back here. I have been with more than more elders I can count to call this place new, their new, from their area. And the first time I remember asking, why did you say that? Said, because this is what it was. Mm -hmm. They talk about the same thing taking place, the flood taking place, the letters been taken down, and some of them was taken down, but they knew in advance and they made their way towards Australia when this took place and kept the tradition, the inner mysticism and the inner technology and they kept that going. And you know what? And here we are again, we're in the same situation as we were all that time again because remember, this cycle goes round and it does come back and we're back the same way. We've got a land now which represents most of us and we have the indigenous peoples of the world, not just Australia but other places. And then the Amazon in here who are hanging on to that old tradition because they know and they tell us this, you will go back to the news ways again. And why the Egyptians came because they realised they were trying to find that balance. But guess what? You can't. Whether you've got to go the middle way or you don't, you can't do a bit of both. You've got to understand it fully, and you've got to be able to learn to telepathically communicate and walk on there like that damn person and all those things. That's what we can do, yeah. what we aren't doing. And while we're addicted to the machines, we will never get that. So they're saying when you come back, you'll come back to that. So yeah, you're right about everything you said. And that's what they've told me too. I'm, it's like when you were saying, I'm nodding all the way through, because I'm thinking, yeah, that's what the Raman Jerry said too. Same thing, that we chose two ways. There's always been two ways here. And over the last 8,000 years, at the Atlantean way, after that, that, that took place, we thought that would finish it. No, it just continued, didn't it? It continued on. And that they just held fast to it until we came. And they still held fast and they were waiting for us to take it. Mm. So it's a circle. Atlantis fell. And it's re reappeared again, and it never fell. It stayed. What's your take on that? Well, my take on that is to be honest, I kept away from it because I tried to keep away from this stuff and stayed with the straight and narrow. But I've got to tell you now, nothing I write now, University of Preston, Cup, and 40 foot pole, that wouldn't go near me. But I would suggest to you that my take on Zachary Sitchin after reading the first panel there would be like, I don't have much of an issue with any of it. I just see exactly the same story there. I can't see any difference. So I'm quite comfortable with it. I'm quite comfortable with what he said is exactly what I'm reading there. And yeah, that there were two spirits, one that was into slavery and one that wasn't. That's sort of symbolic of what we're talking about here anyway. I think they're just metaphors for something bigger. But yeah, I, I don't have any issue with any of it. I think what he's talking about, the fact that we're making that. But well, no the origins being over there compared to here, like the first sort of... Look, I think... That's quite recent though. In the, yeah. If you're talking a million years of yeah. this particular mm -hmm. lineage, yeah. uh, 5,000 or 10,000 or 15,000 years is a bit. Yeah. I think they could have carried that tradition because I really, I, look, I was with the Rab and Jerry once. I've told this story quite a few times. I was with them when they spoke in language and there were eight elders and they spent half an hour deciding how one word would be as spoken because there'd been a change in circumstances and they finally agreed on that. That's the end of the story. So, we know that what the original people, when they pass it on, it stays intact with the word. So that I see the same narrative on those walls I see in Samaria, I would be disappointed if I didn't. Because up until 8,000 years ago, the original people gave up everything. They shared everything. That's why when you look at the hobby, if you look at the hobby and how they live, you think, my God, what's the difference? And the answer is probably that much. There's not much difference. And you go and look at the way the people live in some of the Amazon regions there, so little difference between the original ways. So I think that what was being recorded in Samaria is a faithful re record. But I don't know that it actually happened there. I mean, they say it did, but I'm not so sure that it did happen there. I'm not. Also, I'm also saying there was more than one attempt to do genetic modification. So is his theory based in Samaria? Like, that's where he believes that it all went began, basically. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. not so convinced about that, and I'm not going to deny that there were other experiments that took yeah, place in other places. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to say that for yeah. yeah, I'm exactly. just saying that it happened here first. Yeah. And remember, Arnie Bev said in her dreaming story that the people from there went out from here. Yeah. She didn't say where they went. They went out. Now, we know, I know that we've got examples of boat journeys that are now taking place with 20 people on there to go back a million years, 900,000 years, same time the Pleiadians came here. It may well be they came out soon after, and it may well be that there's been more things that have taken place at later dates there. But I know where it started. And I don't doubt for a second that the stitching's on about it's right. And I know he's got issues with other people saying it's part of this, but I think generally it's got it right. But that doesn't say that there's really the animal. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah.
But yeah, and then therefore, and look, those things, I don't have an issue with that too, because it may well be, and I have no doubt, there's been more than one player that's been here. So I don't think it's just the Cleonians have been here. I think this. Like, you ask the original people about the lizard people. Yeah. Get started on that one, and I'll tell you. I mean, look, we've got a picture in here somewhere. Twenty-two thousand years of cave, uh, way hill somewhere. Of yeah, that one. That's twenty-two thousand years old. What's that? That's a lizard person, and that's in a cave. No one's ever photographed this. This lady will have to, to draw it, and that's a faithful replica based on what she did. It stated for twenty-two thousand years. That's way before the Egyptians were putting half humans, half people together. Here it is. Here. Is that trap that called in your life? I'm not sure with that. I, I don't. I don't. I'm not sure, but I do know it could be. Yeah. It could be. But right. they talk about that. They talk about all different sites of people, and they talk about others coming through. But they have. They link themselves here. To create. It may well be stitching has got another group that's done something there too, but they probably use the same material. Yeah, and then of course, sort of Wayne Herschel's material. Points to 17 and a half thousand years ago, a whole other mob that came from <laughs> also the same area of ladies, but their, their deity would love. Yes. You know, from a, a different. And so. Well, that's interesting because there's a whole other thread of the world being kind of moving with people, and that's like a story uh, in the world of the school by itself. It's basically been a whole life. Yes, Movements were taking place. We know the original people were sailing this place. We think at least 60,000 years ago, and we're now starting to lean towards hundreds of thousands of years ago. And they shared everything. This is their culture, isn't it? Their culture is about sharing. So they gave this up with everyone. Like, I'll tell you what Warren Gary said. He said, in the ancient times, Sydney was the biggest harbour, you know, the most plentiful harbour on the planet. It was like the middle of the world. And if you look at where it is, it's the middle of the Pacific, it's the little focal point from there. And he said the rest of the world came to this place. It was considered the, the place where, this is where all the stories of the Garden of Eden, the land of Punt, that we hear about, it's somewhere south of Egypt, where the, the gods grew. This is where they came. And remember, the people who came here were the sons of heroes, the, the high caste were coming here. This was not a common sort of journey that you can read about in the pyramid. This was secret stuff done in private, because these guys were supposed to be in with them. The gods, this is where the gods were living. This is where they were meeting the gods and contacting with the gods and learning that mysticism. The Egyptians were to the world. Is that Akhenaten's It could be. It could be Akhenaten's gift. The one I showed you, because Akhenaten was shown with a pot belly, and this one has got a pot belly. We've given two readings, and you'll find on our videos, we said it could either be Akhenaten or genetic engineering. And we don't know which, until we get to our guidance in that, it's guesswork. I think we'll get more guidance this time. Guidance from elders? Oh, only from elders. I don't, yeah, I don't yeah, listen, I honestly, it. guys, I do not listen to any academic. I only listen to elders. If I don't, I'm not interested in what the academics have got to say. We know what they're saying, and they don't know what they're talking about. When the elders tell us what they do, we'll know for sure. I'm guessing, and I've put down both. Arpanadin was the only pharaoh shown with a stomach like that, and Arpanadin let his feet lock and made them all undress and become naked. Where did we get that idea from? We've got the obvious to me. Why has Tutankhamen got 11 um, boomerangs in this cave? 
there and original people recognise the designs belong to their region because food and harmony was part of this thing. He knew about this too. The Egyptians knew about this place. They called the plant. They wrote it down. They told us to the south that we didn't listen. We also had some of the Egyptians got their incense from the and also, there was Australian gold in there, and there was, yes. um, there was right. skeletal remains of, of kangaroos, right? Yeah, in 1982, CYRO Oasis, they found skeletal remains of different mice. Look, well, there's, so yeah. there's so much evidence over there, too. The Egyptians know about this, but we had someone there for quite some time called Zaria Halas at the place that we tried. He was part of the system, but he was probably worse than most of them. Fortunately, he's now been locked up and put in jail, and that was the joyous. <laughs> all over the world. It was just, finally, they're going to open back up again, and now we're starting to look again because the Hawass was really not a good person. But they know, they know, the Australians and the Egyptians are really a whole of the prehistory. This should be the focal point. Our kids should be learning about this story all the way through instead of what they learn now about the wars. So the elders aren't coming out and telling us now because it will be taken away again, or what? No, they're giving it to us now because it can't be taken away. Their time began on the 21st of December. They, they know they're in the ascendancy now. Our ways now will slowly fall down. Their ways are going to come through. Their, for their ways to come through, the first thing they do is they're going to give everything. When I finally go down next time with a Ram and Jerry and they give me my second ceremony, they will give us secrets that they've never given to people with our hearts then. They want to give it all up on film because they want to share. They want to share with all the whites who are prepared to listen. But they do also say that the whites have to make their mind up quickly. And if they don't have to clear the time, clear it on their own head. They've made that clear too. So if we embrace what they're on about, this is going to be fine. But if we keep going the old ways, they say there is a cut off point. But they don't look for calendars. They don't look at the steps from Jesus. They just talk to the spirits. I see another dust storm here just a couple of days ago. It's another sideways from Galen. <laughs> up the top, it's coming. So the, when's the end of the nine months of gestation? <laughs> the gestation finished on December the 23rd, from that point on. But look, don't look for any particular day that's going to stand and out. And that's up. funny because December 22nd was when um, the Mayan uh, mm. guy that's on YouTube at the moment, Akhtar, have you seen Yes, him? I have, yeah. Um, that's when he said that there was, oh, there's going to be information given. Mm. Um, and yeah. it was 5 o'clock in the morning here and I didn't know until later on that day and they were talking like, um, oh, Akhtar said it in Australia it's going to be 5am and we were awake at 5am, weren't we? And we were like buzzing in here and I'm thinking, what is going on? Because I thought it was on the 21st and of course I was waiting for some sort of sign all day because we buried our crystals in the ground to catch the information for future generations and um, but it happened at 5am on the 22nd of December and you were saying that the death place in the period for that was on the 23rd. So oh, that's very close. Yes. That's and, a grand but, line. But they there knew was... it was coming. It had to come. See, remember, original people say, as on top, down below. Everything on top, down below. There's no difference. They never saw the difference on top, down below. It's like a dream track. The rest of the stories were stars and the prospect. They're locked in there because they're part of that. But as I said, they've always been galactic citizens. We haven't been. We have to actually get our head around that story. So, yeah, but it's not going to be something we're going to see one particular day is going to stand out. And nor will it be every day is going to be wonderful. They'll still be, they'll still fight all the way through. And I know some people are still doing the things that have happened since that day. We think, well, oh, that's not fair. It should all be wonderful and great from this point on. But no, it's not going to be like that. It's just going to be a gradual ascension where the truth will get out. They are quite prepared to share everything they've got. They're doing this because they know there's a change. And I think in the time of the change, I've going to put it to Maybe you. Maybe because Ready. Well, yeah, I think we are, and I think if people want to go and destroy sites and do things like that, I know what will happen to them. It won't be good. I know what will happen. The reason why we can't go after that particular site is people have been near that site, and everyone's been there, they fall on the ground screaming and angry. That's why I have to get permission. You go to that site and get the wrong way, they will get you. They know you're coming. So what we have from now on is a gradual movement towards their way of doing things. In fact, the circle is complete. So, so they, they, they like... Department of Main Roads want to put a, a road smack down from the sacred site now. Won't happen anymore. How come BHP didn't do continue with that mine? How come no one's ever found out that they were going to do that? And the elders came from everywhere and they sung that place. They came out of the lizard's belly, of the snake's belly, that dust that came out. And all of a sudden BHP went quiet on the whole thing. They had spent millions and millions and millions of dollars 
preparing for this. Don't tell me that you have a mark to clip it. They just stop doing it. That part is on. So their ways are coming back, and we just have to let it come and let it run through. So, original um, elders, do they use the same process as shamans, and that's, they use plants as um, other medicinal purposes, but for people to travel, or do you want to actually travel like for foreseeing things? Oh, they, oh for prophesizing. And, yeah, um, for, like ayahuasca or. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Well, they've got their own DMT. Yeah. Um, but do they, is it a frequent thing that the Look, I don't know if it's been, I, I, I can't speak for what they're doing in the centre now. I know that it was used, the curie was used, but like, it's a bit like that. Alfred and Gunja. They had their DMT in the case there. They had this mystical place they used at a certain time. But a lot of them, uh, that was so advanced, man. We still need that stuff. They, that's the difference. I mean, we need this stuff to get in contact with the other side. Some of these guys, they were just constantly there. I mean, they were just sitting between two, two sides. They were sitting in the middle. They were sort of negotiating the ones on the other side. Remember, according to original people, every original person has a little bit of magic. Everyone. Everyone has magic. Today, we don't have any. But that's what we're trying to get back. They all have it. But they don't need that stuff as much as we do because we've been so cut away from that. We're trying to get it back. They had it until we turned up. But that's what's said. Everything goes in circles, and they're circles around the ground. And the three things you speak of are really personal to you. Know, That's the best one. Yeah. I think the personal yeah, tree is one, one you make for yourself. Yeah. You make it yourself, and also you can be made and important. Once I made that tree with the with the gift of Holland, with the um, Brown and Jerry, and I'm not saying it wasn't Arnie Bear from the Dark, you know, once I said that's from the source, that's the tree. I don't need so you just said to yourself. Oh, yeah, no, I just said, I've so I made that decision. I no longer accept um, that, that system and, and that way of doing things. I now accept their way of doing things. I don't live by the decree of do no harm. And so from that point on. Have you had any situations with nothing else at all? Uh, give me time. I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> give me a bit of time because I just got back from Strawberry Hill to a letter saying that my statement of the reason why I was actually doing 12 days over speed limit for Gilman Dark. They didn't accept it, and I'm going to take it for it. And I'm going to, I'm going to say I'm not, I don't hold you. I don't hold to that contract, and I don't hold to your laws anymore. I hold to the traditional laws, and I hold to do no harm, and I was doing no harm at the time. I looked ahead at the road. There was only two cars there. It was eight o'clock in the morning. There was no person in that car coming the other way. It's two in the car on the plate. I sped up by ten k's an hour. You sped up by hundred. I didn't think that was an issue. Therefore, I'm doing no harm. I don't accept it anymore. So I do that from now on, and if I come in from well, thank you, any other situation like that, I do the same thing. I don't accept the law anymore. And when I go, when we go and fight for the visible land, eventually I think Peter, we're going to, have to end up doing something where the, the, the people with blue suits will turn up again. I don't accept it as being there. They're, they're, not, they're not carrying anything I know about. Yeah. So it's the same thing. That's a personal thing. That's all it has to do. And remember, original people didn't have pens and papers anyway, did they? Yeah, yeah. It's my understanding is when you get into a situation that you still want to play it every way, like say, you feel like you're having a drive of life and you're going to go to do this, or anything else, you're a passport, then you're in a quandary sort of situation. Well, the original people have their passport. You walk together forward ways that you bypass. Then I'd have to ask the elders that question, because that's beyond me. I talk to the elders about that. When we go and see the different council of elders, we'll ask them that question. They'll give us guidance on that. And now I'm just going to make a general statement. And then the, as we go along, they'll get more organised with specifics. I'm just going to make a commitment. You know. I don't know if there's an issue that we're helping you visible with the change of the state of the side out of the point. And um, <laughs> that's, that's the point we're at now. We, we want to commence. Discussion of working for time in prison because we're working, recognizing their elders and elders and parents from the government. And that's going to take a little while because they have to have different government power and whatever. We would like to see this happen all over the country. We can land it on this side. But that's one of the long years, probably, it's not such a major story. Well, yeah, I mean, it's sort of, there's a lot of damage there. Really encouraging, and when you look at professional, you get it better now. Because, and I 
Definitely, because I can't read it in. It's interesting. One from Cairns today and one out there. Yeah. It's funny. I just keep, every day we get something new comes in. It's yeah, like yeah. Mm. That's new. Black, it's a remedy return, which means black color, white color dream. I actually mm -hmm. made it up to the new, next part of the culture. That's what we were doing the um, ceremony of it. We were doing CGI on the room. Thanks, everyone. I'll pass this one around. You have to get a certain haircut with all this television programs. <laughs> <laughs> I've been told that many times. <laughs> you won't have a choice there when you're a big star. Uh, <laughs> that would never have one. I'm going to sit twice. I'm going to wear the most of the average fashion cut. I wouldn't wear it for my clothes. I'd never wear a suit for my clothes. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to. Well, actually, I'm hoping to get um, some sort of sponsorship from Yes, because every time I've got a t shirt, see that a Yes t shirt, I'll be quite. Yeah, that is a sponsor. That's a long free advertisement. Yeah, I might get something in there. So, right, too, right? So, you live here in Spain? Oh, it's not really. 